Why does it look better than me? Hello and welcome everybody, Josh here from Bish's RV, and I think it was almost at the exact same event uh, previously that I recorded the 2022 version of this, the North Trail 24 BHS. This is a very conventional, straightforward bunkhouse, but kind of like a crocodile or an alligator, some things don't need to change to stay deadly. So if you've got like a half ton vehicle or a bigger tow package SUV, which would be great for moving your family around, you may not have to like, you know, give up your daily driver necessarily just to go camping. And with the wide stance stability axles, the weight rating on this, and the generally shorter length, it should tow pretty darn nicely. Now, um, North Trail listened to a lot of the feedback that you gave last year. They were able to adopt some of it. They weren't able to adopt all of it. We're going to take a look together to see what they were able to accomplish. So if you've never seen a North Trail, um, this is what you don't judge this book by its cover it's got some key details it's got all the right junk in all the right places um it, it's not the biggest fanciest flashiest rv but we've got things like a true two inch sidewall which very very few brands offer especially in travel trailers that's incredibly uncommon they have perhaps the biggest front storage compartment i think i've ever seen on a travel trailer as a as a matter of happenstance not some goofy one-off floor plan Underbelly is heated. I mentioned the wide stance axles. They've um, done a little bit with solar. I would have kind of liked to see them go a little bit further, but I'll be interested on your feedback on that. Um, the camp kitchen is great. The RV does have a couple hiccups, though. Like, it's awesome it has a plywood floor. It's awesome it has a big king bed in this thing, like a fifth wheel size king. But um, the king bed really eats up the space. Like, you crawl in bed, and that's all you do. But I, I think a smaller RV like this, you spend more time uh, outside anyway. The road mode, you know what, I can't remember. We're gonna have to close the slide to check on the road mode, but doing things like that for you, that's what we will do for you in this video. And if you like those little extra steps and extra efforts, oh, which reminds me, I, I am really excited. I have some awesome footage of the dinette you have to see on this one. And as you may have discerned rather quickly, yes, we are in a, uh, like a show display space here. Um, this is the, uh, the 33rd annual uh, Marvac RV and uh, camping show up in Novi, Michigan at the Suburban Center Showplace. Of course, by the time you're watching this, this event will have uh, concluded. But this is actually the second largest indoor RV show, uh, in at least in North America. I don't know about the world. Uh, I don't, you know, pay attention to every other thing out there. Now, I'm going to give them some credit here. And again, that's, that's the thing with this video. I, I've got some things that I really enjoy about this. I've got some things that they don't quite work all the way for me. But the thing is, you want to leverage the good and the bad against the budget of the RV sometimes. Now, if something's a deal breaker, I'm not saying, well, you should always have to make sacrifices and, and accommodations. I'm not saying that. I don't believe in that. For this kind of money, I don't want you to do that. But sometimes, the juice ain't worth the squeeze is what I'm getting at. So, uh, what does this one have? First of all, um, the, the roof structure is very similar to like a, a Rockwood, a Survey or something like that. Laminated roof structure. Um, so very evenly consistent thermal uh, kind of qualities to it. Central air, um, and like a lot of Heartland products, they H-duct, unless, you know, the ducting would run into the refrigerator, then, well, <clears throat> they stop. 12-volt <laughs> DC compressor fridge on these. I don't think they're doing any more two-way fridges. Now, I'm looking at a, uh, an Eastern build, a Midwestern model uh, built out of Indiana. Their Western production, uh, it used to be two-way fridge only. I do don't know if they're actually offering that anymore. Um, I haven't had it. Everything is still new at the time of this filming. All the 23 updates are still floating in. Now, this is a plywood floor with no heating vents in the floor. See, so um, a lot of times people get worried about soft spots developing. That's not going to happen here, basically, unless you decide to pogo stick this thing. Um, also, carpetless marine woven uh, slide flooring in there. And they have toned down the slide fascia a little bit. Last year, this was like a bright butcher's block. It had a neat natural wood look, and it still does. But I think they dialed the color palette in a little bit better here. And speaking of color palettes, just wait. I can't wait to show you something. I, I, I caught some footage. I think it's just very cool. And I'm very proud of on that dinette. In fact, I, I might end up reusing it several times uh, the rest of the season here. Now, this is all sealed edge thermal foil countertops through the entire, uh, or pardon me, in the kitchen. Actually, not the entire RV. That's one of the few eh, I have. But, you know, around the kitchen water source, you're good. Now, what do you think about this? In a way, I, I really like that the awning button is down there so that I can reach inside the RV 
from outside of the RV and I can open the awning. I don't know that I love the slide out button down there, but with laminated walls and a laminated roof, sometimes it is a little bit tricky trying to figure out where to put all that stuff. Now, I need to get some clarification on the factory on something because uh, the bottom bunk here says 300 pound load capacity. And then the top bunk says 200 pound load capacity. And usually they're a little more consistent than that. Oh, by the way, you might have noticed you do have windows for both bunks. One comes off the back and one comes off the side. The bottom one comes off the back because the camp kitchen would block it if the camp kitchen is open. Also, you can't easily see them, but those lights actually do have USBs integrated into them. So there are USB plugs for both the upper and lower bunks. That's a cool little detail factor. I think they did some really cool things there. Um, I always do this. I don't know why. I, 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 I moonwalk backwards all the way just so I can open the bathroom door now that it's clear across the camper. I'm an idiot. Anyway, surprise! Bathroom door's open. Uh, moving on over here. Um, if you're looking for things like a porcelain foot flush stool or a bigger bath vent fan, I know a lot of people, uh, at this point, I'm not going to ask. I know that I think everybody would prefer a porcelain stool and a bigger bath fan. If, ooh, hold on. <clears throat> Nice space around the counter. I like that. It's just a little bit deeper on the right-hand side there. Okay, anyway. I think, yeah, pretty much everybody would prefer the bigger fan, a porcelain toilet. It adds a little bit of money. But the good news, those are what I call screwdriver fixes. Those are easy things that if you're looking for those, we can take care of those for you um, at our uh, Bish's RV locations. Now, that vaulted ceiling in the skylight... Uh, being laminated, it allows them to put the skylight w wherever they want it, essentially. And on this floor plan, it really does help uh, the, the vaulted ceiling uh, in conjunction with that to give me the headroom that I need in there. Uh, a lot of RVs, bunkhouses are going with showers even instead of tubs. They have maintained a tub right here. So I would kind of ask, what what's your preference? Shower, tub, or I'm going to throw a, a kink into the works. What about a shub like you see in some of those Cherokees that I record? Let me know in the comments below. Ooh, I like the sound of that. Anyway, uh, the uh, the toilet right here, very fluffy friendly. I do really like the way that that's spaced out. And speaking of spaced out, last night I... Uh... Ah, sometimes the jokes write themselves, even when you don't want them to. I didn't ask for it, folks. It just found me. Anyway, now this is interesting. There's a slide side window here on the forward facing wall but not the rear facing wall. So you don't get maximum airflow out of that. That is one of those things I'm like, eh, what? It's, eh, it's, eh. I, I don't know. I, obviously I, I feel a very certain way about it. Just, eh, is it sounds like Michael Jackson. Eh. <laughs> All right, enough of me doing the King of Pops impressions over here. Um, he, he wouldn't appreciate it. Moving on. Let's take a look at this. We got sliding pocket privacy doors for the bedroom, little storage down below that with a handy little shoe garage, but a neat thing they do. There's like a little hidden storage slide open chest up top there. They are running HDMI wiring on that, by the way, which is actually kind of cool. We already sort of talked about the, uh, the refrigerator. I like the fact that there's wastebasket space in there. And then over here, that pantry is also a closet if you want it to be, or you could kind of half and half it. Uh, like a, you know, a cup of coffee, uh, some creamer. Um, <clears throat> look at this dinette, though. Uh, somebody asked North Trail, hey, can I get a light decor or a dark decor? And they went, yes. Like, you can do whatever you want with the decor on this. But did you notice my knees with those posts uh, under that table? I will tell you, that was uh, a little bit tight under there. I was a little bit surprised, actually. I think you can fit three people. I A lot of people look at these dinosaurs like, you can fit four, five, six people there. No, you can't. And I don't mind hitting that nail on the head and being genuine about that kind of stuff. You know, like, I like the storage above the dinette. I like storage overhead. If the doors are going to flip open, I do prefer them to have some kind of strut or something like that, though. And these don't. But, again, that could be added. I think that I, you know, it's tricky because I, I think I would probably swap these uh, table legs out for a set of free floating uh, legs. And of course, yes, that can fold down uh, into a sleeper. That's actually one of the cool things about this. This is a short RV that can sleep a lot of people. Now, speaking of sleeping, the bedroom footage I'm about to show you is not going to like look super visually impressive because they shoved a big 72 by 80 king bed 
uh, into a small space and put maximum overhead storage on it. Now, if you're tall like me, be careful. That can be a head knocker, so you're going to want to consider that a little bit right there. Um, where do we... Let, let me look you all the way around here. Now, if you're looking at this like, uh, no, I need more walk-around space than that. This is easily sized down to a queen. The bed base under it is queen sized so you don't have to worry uh like you know it, it comes from the factory with a king but you can get it with uh you know a a queen bed you could put one in if you want now the other thing that i thought was interesting i'm not i'm not gonna tell you it's the best mattress i've ever seen but for an rv in this class at this budget they are not using that back breaker death wafer mattress piece of crap that everybody uses gonna give them some credit where it's due and the road mode is not bad. Now, uh, by the virtue of the fact that I can slide up here into the bedroom, I'm sure you can presume that, yes, you can get to the bed. Although, it is definitely easier to get to over here on the door side. Uh, the, the driver's side of the RV, it's pretty much pinched off. However, the RV is not really pinched off in transit. One thing I do recommend if you're going to travel, though, take the table down. Put it down on those runners, and it's less inclined to bounce and jiggle and wiggle around or strap it down or do something. But the fact is... This thing is absolutely uh, Cracker Barrel compliant. If you got to make a travel stop, you got to sleep on a long trip, somebody's got to get back here. Hey, mom, dad, you know, I got to get to the potty or anything like that. Uh, you can, I mean, even the, the big pantry over here, even if you, the RV is like stored beside the house and you can't open the slide, but you want to get it packed for the trip, you can do all of that right here. By the way, depending on where you're watching this, uh, check for a link in the video description. If the uh, uh, contest entry is still open, you could enter to win a $30,000 RV from any one of our stores, which I think is actually uh, pretty cool. Anyway, back to this thing here. Let's talk towing. What's it going to take to get this thing down the road? Again, with the size, the weights, the measures, I do think that this qualifies for the uh, a good you know uh, qualification for the general descriptor of half-ton towable. Obviously, there are some half-tons that are super capable, and there are some half-tons that are not super capable, and you always want to check that on an individual vehicle basis. Or, if you have something with half-ton equivalents, like a bigger tow package SUV, you might be good here. Power tongue jack doing the lifting on the front for us, 20-pound propane tanks, meaning on a Sunday, you could swap them out at a gas station if need be. By the way, you might notice how we've got all these tail lights running. This is a, a fun little thing right here. Of course, oh sh! <laughs> Out. <laughs> okay, take thirty-seven. Go. Okay, so if you look at your pigtail, there's the notch at the top. Take just like a little fuse or something like that, and jump it into the top too. One of those is the uh, the hot line, basically the twelve volt line coming off the battery. And one of those is your clearance lights. Now, the only thing I would ask is, um, you know, with great power comes great responsibility, um, as uh, Uncle Ben's Rice used to say. And uh, make sure you don't do that at night and blind your neighbor. Nobody wants all of your camper lights on at night. It looks really cool. I get it. But um, it doesn't make for good neighbors necessarily. Magnet hold max, slam latch compartments right here. And they call this their King Kong size storage because apparently just flat calling it King Kong storage would have been like, you know, an MGM kind of lawsuit or something like that. Actually, funny story. Um, Nintendo came out with Donkey Kong, and a uh, movie studio tried to sh uh, sue him over King Kong rights. Funny thing is, the movie studio never actually copyrighted King Kong, and Nintendo said, bring it. And that's when they were a small company. They'd have gone broke. Now, this. I need your input on this, because I don't know how I feel about it. And I'm going to ask you to, to write your comment, and then I'll provide you with my take on it. Last year, they had zero accommodations for solar. This year, you see the charge controller down in the pass-through. Now, when you see a charge controller, you assume solar panel, right? Well, take a look up at the roof of this thing. They prepped it for solar further than anyone I've ever seen. And actually, this is, there's a, you know, okay, so here's the difference in the RV industry between something being prepped and being ready. Prepped means, well, we kind of started it, but you're going to have to finish it, and it's going to cost money. Whereas ready means plug and play. It looks like they made a solar ready plug and play package for this year, which is uncommon. They let you basically just pick your panel and go. I don't, at the time of this filming, have awesome information on the uh, the capacities of that charge controller, the amperage, the, that sort of thing. I'm working on getting that. Um, however, I, I mean, what do you what do you think about that concept? Like, 
is solar ready instead of prepped? Like, is that good? Is that enough? I, I really want to know what you think about that. Now, I say this all the time. Every RV's greatest asset is its greatest liability. The King Kong storage has a gigantic freaking door, which means uh, there's not a whole lot of leftover sidewall space for an awning, especially when you've got a big, uh, you know, camp kitchen door hanging off the back here next to the old, we got to name this, we got to name this stupid thing. What do we, what do we name this? I don't know. Um, nerd board. <laughs> What do we name that? I walked in and I'm like, what is this? What is this? By the way, a uh, bunch of people have been asking for various merch. We are uh, starting to get there. We're not totally there yet at the time of filming, but we'll get there. Anyway, the camp kitchen. So this is interesting. Every single North Trail has some kind of outside camp cooker. You see over here, we got the little college kid dorm fridge. Very good for the bottled water and the barley pop, of course. Um, if it's a camp kitchen model, the, the cooker will be like right in the kitchen. If not, it will be like a grill that goes on the back bumper. Now, obviously one of our team members uh, taking full advantage of those outlets to keep their laptop charged up. And it's great that they have a full sink in this camp kitchen. It is buried in there. And especially if you're cooking something hot, you're gonna be dropping it like it's hot. You're gonna burn your arms like uh, somebody on Top Chef trying to get into that thing. That just ain't gonna work. Um, okay, let's talk construction. Laminated uh, walls, um, a, uh, a, a non-laminated floor though, 5 8 tongue and groove plywood floor decking. So sometimes people get worried about a laminated floor developing soft spots, north trails, you're not gonna have that kind of issue. We're backup camera ready, but frankly, even if an RV isn't, it is. And if you're curious as to why I say that, leave me a comment and I'll, I'll fill you in in the video description. But last year they had zero uh, ability to get up to that fully walkable laminated roof. Well, they don't have a ladder, but like a lot of brands, they're doing that little ladder prep mount. So if you get one of those free floating telescopic ladders, well, you know, you could, you could make that work over here. And then if uh, we, uh, you know, get low over here, you might notice we've got power stabilizer jacks standard on these, just push button easy. This is a single sewer outlet model. The underbelly is also enclosed and forced air heated. Not a magic four seasons camper, as people like to ask, but it is a very solid extended season model. So thank you again for tuning in here. Um, those of you who saw this last year, do you think they listened? Do you think they listened enough? I think they listened a little. There's a couple areas, again, specifically solar. I wish they'd have gone a little bit further. And I, that is just, that is so, uh, folks, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching me walk around these things. Thank you for having fun with me, sharing your thoughts and your insights along the way. Seeing crazy stuff like the, this little nerd cutout over here. I'm just some dude in a small town that for whatever reason you folks have enjoyed watching. And I just, I thank you from the bottom of my heart. This is, I never, I never had a, a direct vision of my career path, but <laughs> this is certainly not what I expected to pan out. But uh, I'm not disappointed regardless. Thank you, thank you so very much. But until next time, uh, again, always leave me the feedback. I'll leave you some links in the video description, some other similar bunkhouses, or maybe something like tweak just a little bit. If you want to see what else is out there, um, maybe if you're just getting your toes wet, you're not familiar with the entire alphabet soup of the RV industry, I'll leave you some links there. And of course, a link to check pricing and availability. So if you're new with us, if you appreciate this, hit that subscribe button. If you've returned, like our video. And until next time, take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone. Mm -hmm.